district court. There you go. All right. Okay, guys. Welcome back to Build, Build Scale, Done. <laughs> Bridget is in the room too. Come on, let's uh, scoot together a little bit here so you can be in on this. Um, actually, I'm going to put the camera back up at this point. Now, now you're out of the picture again, my, my Bridget. Um, sorry. Come on over this way. <laughs> okay, so I need to look at my presentation here. So guys, let's go to go. Let's do it. Let's do it. BSD. Yes, Facebook optimizing. Okay, so optimizing on Facebook is done basically in two big ways, right? There are two ways that we're going to optimize. We're going to have optimization going on by Facebook. That is when Facebook does its thing with the pixel and makes the campaigns go better and better as they go. No sounds. Can you check it? Uh, all right, you well. The member area, no sounds. Member area? All the videos in the member area are with us. Oh, videos. That's uh, that we yours. Yesterday was fine. So even the ones that you watched yesterday were good. Okay, let's uh, let's focus on right now. Don't worry about it. We are in, in a session here. We don't do customer service at the same time <laughs> as we do um, our yeah, current we'll, sessions. We'll so, right? yeah. so uh, if you guys could bring these up in other uh, ways to guys, come on. We're trying to do a live session here, right? Okay, so optimization by Facebook is one thing. That is when Facebook does its magic and tries to make things go better and better, okay? So that's optimization by Facebook. And then there's optimization by managing ad sets. Essentially, on the optimization with Facebook, we don't really have all that much control over that. But we talked already about, uh, about the learning mode. So the control would be to allow Facebook the optimization, the opportunity to optimize, and the time that it takes for them to get things done. So there's an initial optimization that takes about 50 events of whatever the event is that you're optimizing for. And again, these numbers are according to Facebook. So that means essentially what they're telling you is whatever you're seeing, it, within the first 50 events, it's fairly random. There's a lot of randomness to it. it uh, you know, the trying to make it settle down and to improve on it uh, over the course of these 50 events. But basically what they're saying is within the first 50 events, whatever you're seeing is pretty unreliable and could just be completely different the next day. And that is actually something that matches your guys' complaints and your guys' experiences, right? You've mentioned that before. Someday, sometimes it's one day it's, it's great, and then the next day it's not great at all. So what do we do about that? Well, Facebook is just saying that's to be expected, and that's what you can expect because it takes us 50 events to kind of settle in and get in the groove. And so because of that, you can't really expect more, or at least, at least you can't blame them if it doesn't go better, right? So then there's ongoing optimization. Ongoing optimization for that, there's pixel data, right? So that is the data that kind of compounds on the pixel. So the more you have going on, the more uh, you collect data on the pixel, the more you get into your ad account, and the more good experience you're, you get with your, with your ads, the more gets the, the pixel gets optimized and the more uh, better, the better uh, this turns. So then there's ad set specific optimization too. So that's kind of the, the interesting thing. There's something going on inside the ad set where you pick, for example, the delivery optimization window, right? So now within that, it seems like the, the ad set always kind of drops off the information after the optimization window is over. So if you have it set to a day, then the next day it's kind of just going to optimize again for that ad set. So it kind of starts over. And for the seven-day window, it's kind of similar. It rotates through a seven-day window. Um, there's also optimization for custom conversions. Now, this is a little bit more advanced topic because what that does is you can create a custom conversion that only considers some of the conversion events to optimize for. And you want to, this is something you can do, um, you know, if you have some campaign that is running really well and you have a single product that all of a sudden just takes off, it sometimes helps a lot to just make a custom conversion just for that product to optimize it even better. All right. Now, here's really what we can actually do something about. So everything that happens with in optimization by Facebook, it's like, okay, 
we can kind of play into their system and do as they say it works, or we can try to kind of come up with our own theories about what works and set up our things as we need them to make them work with smaller budget while we're testing and things like that, okay? But here is the big piece, and that is optimization by management. And that has really something to do with how we are going to set up our ads and how we manage our ads, how we look at the results and how we respond to res the results so we, that we can optimize our ads and get better results, avoid the, the worst results and improve the better results. So what we want to look for is always the best campaigns or the best ad sets. And the way I do this is, first of all, you look at certain columns, right? So in the Facebook reports, there are a bunch of different columns available. And the pre-made pre reports, the pre-made uh, you know, uh, templates for the reports are usually not all that useful to me. You know, this is what I want to watch. I want to put the columns in this kind of order. Those are the most important ones. The amount spent, the purchase conversion value. That's pretty cool because if you have that side by side, then theoretically the amount spent and the purchase conversion value should show you what, what money out, money in, right? Money out, money in, money out, amount spent, money in, what you came, what came back through the purchase conversions and in revenue. The next column that I set up is the ROAS. ROAS has really become, since they've launched it, has become a really important metric for me to watch. I really like it because it captures, you know, what uh, not only what each conversion costs, but how the cost is relative to the revenue. Yeah. So if a if a uh, if a transaction brings in a lot of revenue, then it's a higher ROAS than if a conversion brings in less revenue. So therefore, ROAS is kind of a better metric than just looking at the cost for the purchase. Um, but I still also look, of course, at the count, so how many transactions you have, and then um, what's the CPA, what is the cost per purchase. Uh, if you want to get my complete uh, column setup, I've uh, kind of invented a little uh, shortcut um, that you can opt into uh, using here. It'll, be, it'll come in so handy when you go in here and you use this, uh, I call that a Facebook report wizard. So it's, it's a really nifty tool. What it does is you go in here, let me just show that real quick, uh, what's going on. Uh, it's not that one. Okay, never mind. Oh, it's this one. Sorry. So I'm messing myself up here. So on this one here, this is the report com generator, right? So the way it works is you come in here and you put your Facebook account ID in here, and you put your business manager ID in here, and you hit support, uh, hit submit, and then you will open this will open up your business manager, your business manager inside this ad account. You go to the ads manager and you'll have all the report columns laid out exactly the way that I like it. And so this tool comes in handy whenever you set up a new account or when you go to a look at a, at a different account, you can just put the account ID in there, the business manager ID in there, click submit, and the account columns will all show up the way, uh, the way that I like them, or the, way, you know, the way that I like them. Okay, cool. So that's pretty cool. That is cool. So then, as you're looking at uh, campaigns and ad sets, you want to move from campaigns to ad sets. What I mean by that is I, it's really important to look at large numbers first. So the more, the more numbers you have on any specific number that you look at, the better. The more statistics you can gather, the better it is, right? So if you have only, let's say you have 30 purchase events, and they're spread out over... Uh, five campaigns. It's much better to look at the campaign level than looking at the ads level first. So you want to first go zoom out, look at the big picture where all the data compounds, where all the data comes together and is added up in the campaigns and in the summary. And then you want to drill down and drill in and see how this all comes out when you drill it down, dial into the ad set. So that's why I'm moving from the campaign to the ad set level. Now, then when you look at the campaigns first, you sort 
by the amount spent. If you sort by amount spent, automatically the most spent campaign, the highest spent campaign comes up to the top. And what does that help me with? It helps me focus on where my attention needs to be because I need to focus first and do possibly do something about the campaign uh, that spent the most. If I pay attention to the campaign that spends the most, then I know that I can catch problems if it spent the most without, without uh, getting good returns, or I can catch the good performing, the well performing ad sets f first as well. Because if I focus on the highest ad spend, or the highest amount spent, and I discover, oh, this is really working well, then I can manage the positive end as well. So that's what it comes down to. I always try to manage the, the best performers and then the worst performers because they're the pieces that need attention. You know, if you lose money on the worst performers, you're going to kill those. If you, you want to also identify your best performers, so you can build on them and get your mind in the right space of growing the assets further and scaling further with the performers, with the campaigns that perform really well. So the second thing you could uh, sort by is by sales. Sales is also a good good thing to go. You know that brings up the highest sales numbers always on top, and that also normally puts the best performance up on top. You can also sort by ROAS. That's another good way to identify the best performers and bring them up first. And you know when you click and click on the sort uh, button on top of the column uh, twice, you can actually reverse it, so you can kind of flip it between the worst performers with the lowest ROAS and the highest performance with the highest ROAS coming up on top. So that way you can identify your best performers on top or your worst performers on top and attend to them first. And usually kind of the middle field, the middle ground of campaigns is usually not all that urgent to manage. It can usually give that a little bit more time to just kind of gather some more data and go through some more traffic until you can really see some results. ROAS means, re means return on ad spend, R-O-A-S return on ad spend, okay? So then I really uh, applied the 80-20 rule for my ads and campaign management. The 80-20 rule is also known as the Pareto principle that basically says that um, the, good, the results, 80% of the, of the revenue comes from 20% of your campaigns or 80% of your ad spend happens to, well, no, that doesn't work that way. So 80% of your, of your revenue comes from 20% of your ad sets. Yeah. Um, so that means the best performing ad sets are going to make the most sales. 80% of your sales are coming from the from 20% of the top performing ad sets. On the other hand, 80% of the wasted uh, budget spend happens on 20% of the ad sets that just perform the worst. So that, this is not a hard number, right? It's not 80 and 20, like exactly. It's more like a picture. It's a phenomenon, a symptom that always holds true that most results come from few of the, a few causes. Um, and that's in the negative as well as in the positive. So you're looking for what are your top performers? What are your underperformers? And then you want to go about it by identifying them and then increasing what's working. So you're going to do more of what's, what's good and you're going to do less of what's not good. Okay, so cut out what's not working and increase what's, what's working. Now, let's talk a little bit more in depth about what is the optimal cutoff CPA. So it's like if you have some results running and you have some tests going, and you get some results, you look at the numbers there, where should you do the cutoff? What should be the number where you have to kill things? And that... Um, kind of depends a lot on you and your comfort level on how you are, where you are in your overall affordability, what kind of budget do you have, what kind of spend can you allow to, you know, before you break even, even maybe losing a little bit of money in testing, but then uh, looking at the test data and taking the test data, evaluating it, looking at it and finding out what you need to do to improve on the tests. That is really what you want to learn from the test data. And that's important. And if you learn these lessons from the test data, then you can invest the next ad spend better and uh, go further into you know, split testing, identifying what's working, identifying what not, what's not working. 
Okay, so what is the optimal cutoff for CPA? Well, so let's say you find out that your average CPA, your average cost per purchase is $30. Okay, now on an average cost per action, on an average per purchase of $30, you may find that the best performing ad sets are actually getting you $10 conversions. And the worst performing ad sets are getting you $60 conversions. And now you need to, of course, look over your, your margins and look at, find out what is actually your break-even point. So your break-even point is where uh, your revenue just covers expenses. That's when you break even, right? When you count all your expenses, like the cost that it costs the, the, to fulfill the products, including shipping, um, and you add to that the cost of the ad spend, and then you take that, so that's your total cost, total cost of ad spend and all the expenses, and then you take that out of the revenue, so out of the sales numbers. So when you sell something for $30, and it costs you $6 to fulfill, and it costs you $14 to make the sale, now you have $6 to make to fulfill, $14 in ad spend, that's $20, now you have a $10 profit margin on that, okay? So that would be the profit margin. The margin is important, so that means now you have $10 that you make on each sale that costs you $14, okay? Now, if your average CPA, your average cost per, uh, cost per purchase is 30, that's of course too much, right? On overall, on that you're, you're losing money. So you need to find out where are the top performers and where the underperformers because the top performers they are the ones they want to keep and even do more of those and the underperformers are the ones that are working less that have to be cut off because they are the ones that are wasting your money okay and when you do that and you iter reiterate that like every day you go through there and you make sure you take out the ones that are not working and you do more to the ones that are working that's how you optimize by management so you keep optimizing, you keep reiterating that, you keep going and you keep planting the trees, launching more campaigns, setting up more campaigns so that you keep in doing that habit, keep forming that habit of uh, fueling your business and growing your campaigns. And you find more winners by, the, by doing that. And then you scale when you have a clear winner. In the meantime, you trim the losers and make sure that you manage your campaigns always with regards to doing more for what's working and doing less of what's not working, cutting out what's not working. So how has this been for you guys? You guys are managing us. You've done, you know, told some stories. Okay, so uh, me, let me move over this way to block you out of it. So you can move <laughs> uh, yeah, so in the beginning, we didn't manage ads and that's one of the reasons we took a break, you know, because a lot of people, you know, kind of like, uh, I think, Terrain said he's on and off, right? On and off. That's how we started too. Because we had no idea. We would make some sales, but we had no idea if we had good data or not. And when Oliver told me to start looking at the data, that's when I realized, and he was like, hey, you got some winners here. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, look at these, look at the numbers. So once I realized that, hey, we're not just throwing the money away, uh, and I started to really dig deep into what do the numbers mean? You know, looking at the numbers is one thing, but understanding what they mean is a, is a whole different thing. So um, now that I'm managing the ads, I, I, I can see winners or uh, I can see ads that would just perform a lot better. And, and I know what to turn off and what, what to keep on. You know? Yeah, there you go. I mean, so the big question is usually, well, so I generally have not enough sales. So how do I know what the losers are? Well, you could just throw them all out and declare them all losers, <laughs> and that's what you're tempted to do usually. Um, or you could go, well, um, let's look for a little bit more deep data, and let's look at the other columns. That's why I yep. gave you the, 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 the tool there to set up the columns my way. Mm -hmm. And really what you want to do is you want to see and analyze where break things down, where do things fall apart, where do you lose the relationship with the customer, right? When they're coming in and when they're looking at your product page, 
you have low cost per view content, but then only few people put the, put the product in the cart, right? So there you need to do something to make the offer better on your product page, right? There's something, some tweak that needs to be done on the product page. We right, don't have exactly. enough add to cards. Um, you can change your offer. You can maybe change um, the way that it's presented on the product page. Maybe your store doesn't look trustworthy. You, know, you have to find out these things and, and dig and drill into those to solve that problem. So you usually have, even if you don't have any uh, purchase at all, you, you're going to have some add to cart. You're going to have some view content. If you don't have any add to carts, then the problem is with the view content, right? Or with the purchase, with the product page. So going into the, uh, uh, the lower hanging fruit, as I call them, you know, the data that is closer to the ad, right? Where you have engagement on the ads, you already proven the engagement on your ad by running PPE ads. So, but you still want to confirm that. You want to still confirm that uh, you know, some of the campaigns, some of the ad sets are having higher engagement numbers than the other ones. Uh, some of them may have higher uh, cost per click than the others. And with that, you find um, the difference between, um, you know, an ad set that's performing well and an ad set that's not performing so well. All right. So this is the action step right there is to manage your ad sets. Don't overthink management and don't overthink that part. You will see that what's not working is, you know, in the numbers right there and in the columns, and you'll find what is working as well there. Yeah. So let's go over some of the questions here. I have a lot of questions coming in right now. I'm going to actually, let's see what I'm going to do. We're going to do this. I'm going to um, stop the recording here for a second.